The USS Sea Lion II, a Palau-class submarine, was on her third war patrol in the Pacific. Commissioned in March of 1944, the vessel and her crew had already proven their worth by sinking multiple Japanese vessels off the coast of China and Korea. At 2.20 a.m. on November 21st, the submarine made radar contact with a Japanese formation moving through the Formosa Strait. The vessels, two cruisers, two battleships, and three destroyer escorts were moving at a speed of approximately 16 knots and were not zigzagging. Although the crew aboard Sea Lion did not know it yet, they were about to engage Admiral Takeo Kurita's first strike force, fresh out of Brunei. Nonetheless, Sea Lion's crew quickly went into battle formations to face the enemy head on. Their first target was Congo, also known as the Indestructible Diamond, one of the Imperial Navy's most heavily armed and armored battleships. The odds were against Sea Lion too, but her crew was confident they could pull it off. USS Sea Lion II SS-315 The United States Navy's Balao-class submarines were an improved version of the earlier Gato-class submarines. Named after the Balao half-beak fish species, the class was introduced in early 1943. USS Sea Lion II, the second American vessel to bear the moniker, was named after the species of large eared seals native to the Pacific Ocean. Her keel was laid down on February 25th by the renowned Electric Boat Company in Groton, Connecticut, and she was launched on October 31st, sponsored by Vice Admiral Emery Land and his wife. The second Sea Lion was officially commissioned five months later, with Lieutenant Commander Eli T. Reich at the helm. The Balao-class diesel-electric submarine had a length of 311 feet, a beam of 27 feet, and a maximum draft of 16 feet. She displaced 1,526 long tons when surfaced and 2,463 tons when submerged. Powered by four General Motors Model 16278A V16 diesel engines, four high-speed GE electric motors, and two-cell Sargo batteries, USS Sea Lion II could achieve speeds of 20.25 knots on the surface and 8.75 knots when fully submerged. In addition, the submarine boasted a maximum range of over 11,000 nautical miles at a speed of over 10 knots. The submarine had a complement of 10 officers and over 70 enlisted men and was armed with 10 21-inch torpedo tubes, six tubes forward and four aft, carrying a total of 24 torpedoes. And to counter enemy aircraft, she was armed with a 5-inch 25 caliber deck gun Ehrlichan 20mm anti-aircraft guns, and Beaufort 40mm guns. First War Patrols Sea Lion II engaged Japanese vessels for the first time on June 23, 1944, after arriving at the Osumi Gunto Island Group, located south of Kyushu. However, she did not score any hits and had to maneuver to escape the enemy's depth charges. The vessel then joined another hunting party of submarines and approached the Korean Peninsula to track down Japanese ships. On June 28th, she claimed her first victim, after she sank the naval transport Sansei Maru off the shores of Tsushima Island. Two days later, the submarine used her deck guns for the first time to sink a sampan in the Korean archipelago. Sea Lion II then made her way to the coasts of China to patrol Shanghai where she intercepted a convoy south of the Four Sisters Islands on July 6th. The crew commenced the torpedo attack at approximately 4.50 in the morning, and within minutes, the Setsuzan Maro had been dispatched to the depths, causing the convoy to disperse. At 6 a.m., an Imperial Japanese Navy destroyer and aircraft arrived to hunt down Sea Lion II, which failed to sink the enemy vessel, despite firing several torpedoes. The chase persisted until late in the evening, but Sea Lion emerged unscathed. On July 11th, the determined American crew savored victory once again, having sunk two freighters, Suksi Maru II and Tayan Maru II. Unexpected Damage 
Sea Lion 2 embarked on her second war patrol alongside USS Growler and Pompanito on August 17, 1944. The Wolf ventured into the South China Sea, where they encountered a Japanese convoy on the night of August 30th. The submarines inflicted severe damage on the Rico Maru tanker with surface fire, but they were engaged by the deck guns of other Japanese vessels. Sea Lion 2 disengaged the convoy and later counterattacked, sinking the mine layer Shirataka. She then returned to Saipan to be refueled and resupplied. On September 7th, the Balao class submarine rejoined her attack group and approached the Balintang Channel, where they decimated an enemy convoy bound for the island of Formosa. A destroyer, a tanker, and a transport ship were set ablaze by the combined fire of torpedoes and deck guns. Soon, however, Sea Lion 2 and her hunting party inadvertently partook in one of the most tragic blue-on-blue -blue incidents of the war when they sank Rakyo Maru and Kachidoki Maru. These two Japanese vessels were transporting over 2,220 Australian and British prisoners of war, and it's estimated that over 1,600 of them perished. Upon realizing their tragic error, the U.S. Navy submarines surfaced and managed to rescue over 150 Allied POWs. The remaining 500 survivors were later picked up by Japanese Navy destroyers and transported to mainland Japan. Sea Lion 2 then returned to Pearl Harbor and departed a few days later in the company of USS Keat. She was about to face the greatest threat to her entire submarine career. Indestructible Diamond. USS Sea Lion 2 and Keat returned to the familiar waters of the East China Sea in late October of 1944. Although the pair tracked down several convoys, they refrained from engaging any near Shanghai. At 2.20 a.m. on November 21st, Sea Lion 2 established radar contact with the Japanese formation, traveling through the Formosa Strait at about 16 knots. Unbeknownst to Sea Lion 2 and her task force, they were about to confront Admiral Takeo Kurita's first strike force, which had narrowly escaped a daring Allied air raid on Brunei Island. The flagship of Kurita's fleet was Congo, meaning Indestructible Diamond, named after the formidable Mount Congo in Japan's Osaka Prefecture. As the lead ship of the Congo-class battleships, Congo was the most active vessel in the Imperial Navy. With a displacement of over 36,600 tons, she was heavily armed. Her primary armament consisted of eight 14-inch main guns distributed across four large turrets in a forward and aft configuration, while her secondary armament included 16 6-inch and eight 3-inch guns, along with an additional eight 21-inch torpedo tubes. Congo was also well-armored, boasting a main armor belt that was eight inches thick and a deck that was nearly three inches thick. Moreover, the faces of the main turrets were protected by nine-inch thick armor. Soon, her convoy made contact with Sea Lion 2 and her hunting party. Surprise Attack Upon establishing radar contact with the Japanese formation, Sea Lion 2's task force grasped the magnitude of the situation before them. There were two battleships and two cruisers. Then, at around 2.40 a.m., three additional ships showed up. The challenge was on, and the U.S. Navy task force adopted battle formations, with Sea Lion 2 spearheading the assault. Admiral Kurita had instructed his ships to maintain a speed of over 17 knots without zigzagging, relying on a strategic minefield that stretched from north of Formosa along the Ryukyu Islands to Honshu. Believed to be impenetrable for any American vessel, including submarines, the minefield was of little concern to Sea Lion and her hunting party. At approximately 2.55 a.m., Sea Lion fired six torpedoes at the second ship in the formation. Three minutes later, she fired three torpedoes toward one of the battleships. The crew then witnessed three explosions from the first salvo, confirming the successful sinking of the destroyer Yurikaze. As Sea Lion maneuvered for another salvo, the crew heard the impact from the second set of torpedoes, which had struck one battleship and dented its armor belt. It was Congo. Remarkably, Sea Lion's crew captured the attack's audio, using a sound recorder left behind by a CBS war correspondent. 
The submarine then reloaded as Admiral Corita's task force began zigzagging to evade incoming torpedoes. Nevertheless, the U.S. Navy submarines relentlessly maintained pressure and strategically pursued their quarry. There was no way out. Sinking Congo Sea Lion's crew initially believed they had only dented Congo's thick armor, but the damage inflicted was far more severe, and the formidable vessel began flooding at an alarming rate. It was 3.10 a.m., and Congo's crew knew the end was imminent. Even so, the crew and the rest of Corita's force continued to sail following their Bushido principles, dropping depth charges and employing every possible tactic to destroy the enemy pursuing them. At 4.50 a.m., Corita's task force split into two groups to distract the submarines. Sea Lion went after the slower group, which quickly lagged behind due to Congo's flooding. The battleship's speed gradually diminished until she was left motionless in the water. Then, at 5.24 a.m., Congo's magazine exploded, and the ship swiftly vanished beneath the waves. Over 1,200 crew members perished, including Vice Admiral Ugaki. Sea Lion's Commander Reich, a proud Irish Catholic, then yelled, quote, Oh, the luck of the Irish. Thank you for watching our video. Don't miss out on more epic encounters from modern history by subscribing to Dark Seas and the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels. And show your support by hitting that like button and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our latest content. We publish new videos regularly, so stay tuned.